Dang, dang. This is a favorite topic that all of you will like. Imagism. Everybody knows. Easy poetry, very short, short, short poems written by Ezra Bound, etc. <laughs> Did you know, guys, when I was doing my BA, I found a poem by Ezra Pound, just two lines, and I spent weeks searching for the rest of the poem, not knowing that this is the entire poem. Imagism is an entire chapter in our encyclopedia. And so happy I have been able to do all this and people are benefiting from it. So shall we talk about the Imagist movement in America? The Imagist movement is an avant-garde movement or experimental movement part of modernism. And they used free verse. Imagism is part of the modernist principle of condensation condensation means don't elaborate don't describe condense everything so that you will be able to bring a lot of meanings into one image one symbol all the modernist writers used condensation through either the use of images or symbols or through the use of epiphany or through the use of objective correlative did you understand? There are all ways in which lots of emotions, experiences can be condensed into one image. Now, the Imagist movement is a totally new approach. Never before in the history of literature, anybody wrote like this without elaboration or description. Isn't it? And this was after Ezra Pound's slogan, make it new. <laughs> Ezra Pound said, make it new. What the Imagist did was what Ezra Pound said, the ideogramic method. That means you should show abstract ideas in concrete images you you should not uh, try to describe the abstract ideas in abstract language instead show concrete images this is like objective correlative and when you write poetry you are creating images you are creating music you are creating ideas Ezra Pound called it, called it milopoya milopoya means music making from the language itself, music is created naturally. Photopoya means image making. From the language itself, images are made. Logopoya means word making or idea making. From the language itself, ideas are made. Did you understand? These are all ideas of Ezra Pound. And Ezra Pound was the most important figure in imagism. An imagist poem is like a snapshot, like a Photograph. Remember photography had just started at that time. An image was famously defined by Ezra Pound as an intellectual and emotional complex in an instant of time. An intellectual and emotional complex in an instant of time. That means bringing together the head and the heart. That means unification of sensibility. Isn't it? So that is image. Later Ezra Pound thought... Imagism is not enough. Just a static image is not enough. Let us have a whirlpool of meanings. So he started what is called vorticism. Imagism started in the year, I am thinking, do you know in which year it started? It is 1912. And vorticism started in the year, I am thinking, 1914. Vorticism is a kind of imagism where uh, poetry is more dynamic and vorticism was in, introduced in the journal called Blast. Blast. In the book called A Retrospect, what did Ezra Pound do? Ezra Pound talked about three principles of imagism. What are the three principles of imagism? Direct representation of the object. Are, don't beat around the bush. Direct representation of the object. Secondly, don't use unnecessary words. Only use content words, most important words. 
one poem by Ezra Pound called uh, In a Station of the Metro was many pages long. He deleted words, deleted words, deleted words, deleted words, deleted words. Finally, it is only 13 words or something. Apparition of the faces in the crowd. Petals on a wet black bow. <laughs> 13 words. That is all. Poetry over. So, first principle of the imagism is direct representation of the object. So much depends on a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Just like a snapshot it is. Second principle is don't use unnecessary images. Third principle is natural music should be there. Artificial music should not be there. Those are the three principles of imagism. Are you ready to hear about the ma major images? Amy Lovell. Amy Lovell was born in 1874. 11 years older than Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound, Amy Lovell, Hilda Doolittle, all of them met at the University of Pennsylvania. Did you know that? Amy Lovell is the author of famous poems like The Pike, P-I-K-E, Pike, Venus Transients. All these poems, whatever important poems are there. I have given many important poems here. They are all word descriptions that create sensations. Did you understand? Description using words but they create some emotion in you. Amy Lovell. Don't forget and then we have the father of imagism. T.E. Hume. T.E. Hume translated some French writers. Did you know that? George Sorrell. Andre Bergson. This Andre Bergson influenced T.S. Eliot in his concept of past, present and time all being together. Not only the pastness of the past but also its presence. That idea came from Andre Bergson, the author of Creative Evolution. Our T.E. Hume is the author of famous poems like Autumn, Autumn, The Embankment, etc. In the embankment, for example, he's talking about poor fallen people under the star-eaten blanket of the sky. Look at the sky. It is like holes in the blanket. The star-eaten blanket of the sky. Beautiful, isn't it? I love it. William Carlos Williams, born in 1883. He was a real innovator of poetry real revolutionary did you know he brought about a metrical invention called the variable foot which is based on the principle that one line of poetry should be one breath you should be able to speak one line of poetry with one breath this idea influenced the beat generation William Carlos Williams is the author of Red Whale Barrow and what do you see here? An unusual picture of a usual object. It looks like such a simple poem. Anybody can write. Every single word is so carefully placed there. If you change one word, that poem will not be that poem. Did you understand? It's such a beautiful poem. William Carlos Williams also wrote a poem called The Yachts. Y-A-C-H-T-S. Which, in which he critiques capitalism. And then spring and all, spring, season. He's talking about spring as renewal and hope compared to death and destruction of winter. Then there's another poem that is prescribed in universities. Landscape with the fall of Icarus. Ezra Pound was born after all this in 1885. He was an expatriate American poet in Europe. First he came to England. Then he went to France. Then he went to Italy. When he was in England, he wrote uh, Repostus, a collection. That was the first Imagist collection. The first Imagist anthology by various writers. That was Des Imagistus. The first Imagist anthology. 1914. Same year as Vorticism. When he was in England, he felt fed up with England and its culture. And he wrote Hugh Selwyn Bobberley. 
Hugh Selwyn Mobley is about a poet who is uh, fed up with the materialistic, militaristic culture of Europe. After that, he went to France where he met Gertrude Stein. He was friends with Hemingway, Lost Generation. And then he went to Italy. In Italy, he began to support fascism. He even gave radio lectures supporting fascism. The Americans did not like it. In the Second World War, Ezra Pound was arrested. He was put in an open cage where sunlight, rain, snow, everything fell on his head. He went mad. Finally, when he died in 1972, he had really suffered. And about this experience, he wrote in Cantos. Cantos is a massive, epic-like poem. And there is a section called Peace and Cantos, where he talks about his trauma. And the Cantos has Chinese letters and all that. It's a very funny poem. Chinese letters. By the way, reposters had translations from Old English, etc. After this, we have a couple. H.D. or Hilda Doolittle and Richard Aldington. H.D. wrote poems like The Pool, Sea Rose, Garden. They are prescribed, okay? The Pool is very famous. He's, she is addressing something in the pool or maybe she is addressing the pool itself. And Garden is a nature poem, but it's about oppression. Her husband, Richard Aldington, was also a major imagist poet. Richard Aldington. He was a poet, novelist, biographer. He wrote Death of a Hero based on war experiences. Now, the last imagist poem for you is E.E. E. Cummings, 1894 born. All of you know that E.E. E. Cummings wrote pattern poetry. His poems are very uh, weirdly typography, weird typography they have. Have you seen poems like Grasshopper? Then Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills is uh, in the shape of a gun. Wow. So he was a very major innovator. He was Harvard educated and he was one of the literary ambulance drivers also. And in all his poems, there is a certain philosophical edge. He was very deeply transcendental in his outlook, really, E. E. Cummings. And he used lots of funny things in poetry like fragmented words, capital lines, mm -hmm, capital letters in the middle of words, wrong spelling, jumbled words, punctuation is very erratic, things like that. Pity this busy monster man unkind. Have you heard of that? Pity this busy monster man kind nahi man unkind. Of course, it's a satire on mankind. So there are so many such uh, works. Anyone lived in a pretty how town. All in green went my love riding. I sang of Olaf glad and big. These are all important poems that are prescribed in universities. So, we are proceeding fast with our American Literature Encyclopedia. The second volume is also getting ready. By the time the second volume is out, you should have finished with the first volume. After the recording of this video, I am straight away going to do the second volume final editing. Okay, so we are all there with you, Team Tess. You should study, you should become amazing professors. All the very best to all of you.